Hello everyone, my name is Jose with Triangle Systems. In this video I'm going to go over the management interfaces on a Triangle radio. There's two types of management on the radio. There's in-band management and out-of-band management. I have a Apex Orion here, default radio. So every Triangle radio out of the box, it's always going to be in-band management. When you have in-band management, you're able to manage the radio and pass user traffic on the same Ethernet cable. Now we're going to start first with an out-of-the-box radio. Now we're going to power up and see what happens. We got one shield bit Ethernet cable. So this is an all-in-one power supply and PV injector. This is the P Supply WP-48L. This is a wall mount power supply and PV injector. So we have a radio port. This goes to our only physical port on the radio. I'm going to plug it in right now. So this is out of the box setup. This is IBM. Now when this radio powers up, we're going to go directly to the radio via the switch port on the POE here. So we're going to wait for this radio to start the boot sequence. First thing we're going to note is this LED is going to turn green solid. So this is the starting of the boot cycle. Now that our radio is booted up, we can tell this because our link LED indicator is flashing. Now that it's flashing, we can access the radio. We're going to access the radio via the PoE injector. So in the PoE, we have the radio port and the switch port. Now this switch port can be directly connected to our laptop or to our network. So we're going to go ahead and plug in here. I'm also going to show you if you're using a split system PoE design, which is the power supply independent of the PoE injector, how you would set up the IBM connection out of the box. First thing we have is the PoE injector. So it has two sides. The right hand side says data port out, data to ODU. So this port here is the PoE going to our radio. The bottom port goes to our management interface, our switch, or a laptop. Now this is connected to the power supply directly. This PoE injector has redundant power supplies. So these two ports at the bottom are redundant power. You can have the utility grid power and you have a battery backup on the other one. So we're going to connect it here first. When we plug it in, first I want to notice is ODU off. So that means there is nothing connected to the the actual PoE indicator. Now, that is going to turn green when we connect the ODU. If for some reason the ODU does not turn on the green LED, it could be one thing. The shielded on the cable, the Ethernet is not done properly. We would suggest to recrimp the RJ45 or check the grounding on the cable. So I have a pre shielded cable made. So we're going to connect it here. So we can see now that ODU on and the green LED is now flat, it's indicating that it is connected. So we're going to wait for the radio to power on to the boot sequence. At this point, we can go ahead and connect our laptop or switch to this interface. This is how a split system PoE injector will be connected to run IBM. Now that our radio is booted, we're going to go ahead and log in via the web interface. First thing we want to do, we're going to pull up a web browser. Every time a triangle radio is factory reset, the management IP goes back to default 192.168. That 100, that 100. We're going to go into link setup and look at the management interface. On the management interface, we're going to see the default IP, netmask, and gateway. Now, out of the box and factory reset, IBM is going to be enabled on. Since IBM is enabled on, we only need a single cable to carry management traffic and user traffic. 
When IBM is enabled, we can see first firsthand IBM tagging is off, and there's a VLAN ID default 100. If we wanted to set the VLAN tagging, we must first go in and set the VLAN ID, and then we enable VLAN tagging. If not, we're going to lock ourselves out of the radio until we can have the same VLAN ID on the tag port. Now, IBM should only be used in a one plus all link configuration. This is useful to go over the link over the wireless interface. Now we're going to cover OBM, Auto Band Management. Auto Band Management creates a dedicated management port when you enable it. When you enable OBM, your physical port GE1 on the Apex models is going to become the management port specific only. So that means that this becomes a management port only and you cannot use any VLAN tagging when OBM is enabled. When OBM is enabled, you're going to have to use an SFP to Fiverr or Copper module to pass user traffic. Here are two examples. This is a SFP to Copper, SFP to Fiverr. In this case, I'm going to use the Copper one. So that's going to be our dedicated user traffic port. Now I'm going to log into the radio via the web interface and go ahead and enable OBM. OBM must be enabled when setting up a 2 plus 0 system, a PLA system, or XP configuration. So we're going to pull up our web interface. We're going to go into our default management IP address. Admin, triangle, all default passwords and username. Now to change management from IBM to OVM, we're going to go into the config mode. The username is config, password triangle, Go into link setup and management. The only thing we need to do is come here to IBM enable. We're going to turn it off. At this point, our physical port is going to become a dedicated management port. Apply changes. Traffic port will be moved to G2 SFP module. No service across the link will be available until the physical traffic is moved to G2. Management remains on GE1. Proceed. We're going to proceed with the action. And refresh the page. There we go. Now IBM is enabled off, so this means OBM is enabled. Now we can go ahead and put traffic on our SFP port. For this example, we have the generator here. We're going to connect it, and this will be a traffic going across the link. So now we have out-of-band management, dedicated management port, and user traffic on the secondary port. For the Giga models, Orion and Lynx, it's the same principle. The only thing is that now you have a little more ports, two extra ports, on the Giga models. Thanks for watching the video on IVM and OVM management. If you like the video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us in other social media as well. We'll see you on the next one.